Now it's time for Quarantine Tonight. Live from an undisclosed location north of the Platte River, here's your host, Mike Flood. We always say north of the Platte River, but to be fair, we are actually south of the Platte River tonight at a undisclosed location we've been at since about the first week in January. But tonight we've got a very familiar face on. He's been with us twice before on this program. His name is Paul Siebert. You're going to meet him in just a moment. Uh, if you haven't already enjoyed his music, tonight we've got a very special Irish treat. And I was thinking of all the ties to wear. I should have worn a green tie to celebrate. We're the night before St. Patrick's Day uh, in Nebraska. And I'll tell you what, uh, if you want to get in the mood, uh, maybe you're a little Irish, maybe you just plan to be Irish tomorrow, you're going to enjoy tonight. I want to make my plea again. We need your prayers, quite literally. We need help getting our evening prayer in. If you know somebody in the Lincoln area that would like to do it, uh, not to give away too many hints where we're at, uh, temporarily. Uh, we'd like to know about them because we'd like to invite them onto the program. If they'd like to uh, video it, you don't have to be a pastor. It can be anybody that wants to say the prayer. Well, then get a hold of us and send us that note. Uh, we'll put that address on the bottom of your screen, and hopefully it works for you uh, to talk somebody into it because it is important uh, not only to us but to so many of you uh, listening and uh, enjoying the prayer as we start our program. So tonight, uh, after a night of uh, quartet uh, last night, barbershop quartet, we have plenty of Irish music. And uh, if you know somebody that wants uh, to get in on the action or maybe call them tonight and tell them that Paul Siebert is back, and I'm going to count one, two, three, four, five, six instruments that I can see right now. There's probably more tucked away uh, behind the stage. Paul is uh, hes an expert of a lot of different uh, instruments, and he's a lot of fun to have. In fact, uh, the Nebraska Humanities Council and the Nebraska Arts Council often recruit him to go and spread his talent across the state. So we'll have him in just a moment. Let's start with our evening prayer. God is good all the time, and all the time God is good. My name is Pastor Charles Katurima. And I'm a pastor here at the First United Methodist Church in Nebraska City. I'd like to invite you for a time of prayer. Let us pray. Gracious and loving God, we are so thankful for your faithfulness. We know that your mercies are new every day. We count on you to guide us and lead us. We at this time like to continue to lift our children as they go back to school. And dear God, you may protect them, protect their teachers, all those who are helping. We continue to pray that you may protect all the medical staff that uh, take care of the sick people, doctors, nurses, first responders. And dear Lord, you may keep on teaching us new ways that we need to take care of one another by protecting ourselves so that we may not pass the coven to other people. Bless us now, Lord, and bless us for the days to come. In your name, Christ Jesus, we pray and believe. Amen. Quarantine Tonight, we've got Paul Siebert here. Paul, this is your third appearance on Quarantine Tonight, I believe, and uh, we'll get all the buttons pushed here. And welcome back. Nice to well, see you. Thank you. I'm honored that you'd have me back. Oh, uh, you do a great job. Um, love doing the show at this undisclosed location. That's right. A little closer to your uh, native home, yep. I should say. Yes. Uh, interesting uh, fast fact. Last time uh, Paul was on was Thanksgiving night. You did a wonderful Christmas program. And we had a great four-hour show. We did two hours of the Leo Lani Orchestra with lots of polka and big band. And then uh, you came in and just knocked it out of the park for Christmas. And here we are with a new season, St. Patrick's Day tomorrow. Yep. Uh, I do all kinds of uh, any of the holidays you can think of. I've got specialized music for Christmas is one of my favorite. But St. Patrick's Day is another one of my favorites. I love Celtic and Irish music. I am not Irish unless I've had a sh shot of Jameson. Which but, we uh, can handle that here <laughs> at this special location. Uh, but uh, enjoy the Celtic music. It's a big part of the uh, history through here. Uh, the wagon trains, a lot of the music we hear about that was happening was Celtic in nature. And so... Uh, let me see how good my memory is. Uh, Sutton? 
Uh, originally from Sutton, Nebraska. Originally from yep. Sutton. So. His dad was a blacksmith. Yep, That's blacksmith, right. and I grew up in the blacksmith trade. I'm a manufacturing engineer. That's right. Uh, but I've been playing music full-time since 2004. So. And uh, obviously with coronavirus, it's just a new uh, beginning. Uh, but you are booked in O'Neill coming up. Yep, um, booked uh, in O'Neill, the Nebraska State Fair, several county fairs in the area. I had half a dozen uh, uh, festivals in Iowa that I'm going to check back into to see if they'll have me back. Uh, and so, uh, and here's what you'll enjoy about tonight. Not only is he great musically, but you get a lot of the history that comes with the music as uh, those Irish settlers made their way across the great state of Nebraska. It's only fitting that you're going to O'Neill. Wisner's another Irish town. What are some of the Irish towns in Nebraska? Uh, yes, there's, uh, oh, good grief, I'm thinking of it. Oh, Norfolk? No, no. Well, yeah, uh, that doesn't really matter. Gearing, uh, <laughs> anyway, yeah, there's a, there's a few, but... Uh, um, I'm actually Russian in, in, in culture, so but uh, we didn't bring any of our music with us. We left the Russian culture there. So You were uh, moving here. Yeah. But the Irish definitely brought the music with them. Flood's a little Irish, by the way. There's okay. a little bit of Irish in there. Uh, I tell you what, let's just enjoy tonight. Paul Siebert is here, a special Irish show on this St. Patrick's Day Eve right here on News Channel Nebraska. You're watching Quarantine Tonight. Great. Thanks, Mike. Hey, we've got, uh, there's a bunch of music tonight. Uh, uh, some of the music is going to be authentic Irish music, and some of it is going to be American Irish music. And some of it might be uh, tunes that I have written that are close and Celtic in nature. And we're talking about the Celtic nations, which typically include England, Ireland, Scotland, and Wales. England does not usually consider itself a Celtic nation, but I, I consider it is because the, uh, the music that came from that area is very closely related and in my Nebraska history programs with the Nebraska Arts Council and the Humanities, I talk a lot about the music that came through here with the wagon trains, uh, and a lot of it was Celtic in nature. And so there's a lot of that. But each of these songs are f a very classic folk tunes, and folk music is such that uh, it has a living being in itself. From one end of the country to the other, it can have different chord configurations. The lyrics can change. Typically, the tune is very recognizable. Uh, sometimes the tunes change, but it's a living, breathing organism in itself, and that's why we call it folk music. And so some of these tunes are going to date back to the 1600s. Some of them are American Irish tunes that you will not even hear ever in Ireland. Uh, they would not consider these Irish American songs even Irish at all. So we're going to start off with one of those. Uh, this first tune is a song written by Chaunessy Alcott. And... Um, Chauncey Alcott was a playwright. Uh, his, his parents immigrated here to America in the 1880s, and uh, he uh, was born here in America and was a playwright from 1858 to 1932. Wrote several plays. His plays did not seem to get him very far, but him, some of his music has endured a very long time. So we're going to do one that you probably will hear tomorrow if you listen to any Irish music on the AM radio. I don't know that the FM radio station is going to carry any of it, but uh, this one's called My Wild Irish Rose. And if you've ever performed any Irish music, it's always fun to give it a little brogue sometime and pretend that you maybe have had that shot of Jameson that we talked about earlier. So, But if you like American Irish tunes, this is one of the greats from... Uh, about 1899 is when this one came out. Uh, first recorded in 1913, and it charted number five in, in July of 1913. Can you imagine that? Who here has had a Victrola? You could have had this song on a Victrola. Here we go. It's called My Wild Irish Rose, and if you know the words, you can sing along. Here we go. If you listen, I'll sing you a sweet little song Of a flower that's now drooped and dead Yet dearer to me than all of its mates, though each holds aloft its proud head. T'was given to me by a girl that I know. Since I've left faith, I've known no repose. She is dearer by far than the world's brightest star, and I call her my wild Irish rose. My wild Irish rose, the sweetest flower that grows. You may search everywhere, yet none can compare with my wild Irish rose. My wild Irish rose, 
The sweetest flower that grows And someday for my sake She may let me take The bloom from her wild Irish rose Now they may sing of their roses Which by other names Would smell just as sweetly they say But I know that my Rosie would never consent To have her sweet name taken away Her glances are shy whene'er I pass by The bower where my true love grows And my one wish has been that someday I might win The heart of my wild Irish rose Everybody! My wild Irish rose The sweetest flower that grows You may search everywhere Yet none can compare With my wild Irish rose My wild Irish rose the sweetest flower that grows And someday for my sake She may let me take The bloom from her wild Irish rose One more time My wild Irish rose The sweetest flower that grows You may search everywhere Yet none can compare With my wild Irish my wild Irish rose The dearest flower that grows And someday for my sake She may let me take The bloom from her wild Irish rose Yeah, I can hear you singing at home. <laughs> what a fun old song. Me wild Irish rose. All right. Well, some of this great old Celtic music dates way back into the 1600s. This next piece I'm going to do on this instrument here to my left. Uh, this instrument is called the Sontour. Um, it is the forerunner to the, the piano. It is played with two little wooden mallets. If you can see these. But if you look inside of a piano when you push on the, on the keys, the black and white keys, why there are ten, you get uh, ten at a time, little wooden mallets that are striking the strings. And this instrument played a big part in bringing music out west uh, here into the Midwestern United States uh, and because number one that it was portable you could get a piano to Omaha on a steamship but getting it any further was a challenge they did not take the wagon rides very well extremely heavy uh, and uh, many a, a reference of pianos that were dumped alongside the trail because they just couldn't take the ride so in lieu of that, this instrument was, uh, was brought out. It is in Persian in nature. It dates back about 3,500 years, very ancient in design. So all the European cultures have this instrument. They are still very, very popular in Europe. Uh, here in America, you rarely see them now that the piano uh, is around. And even in the 1800s, as soon as the piano was here, people gave up this instrument uh, for the piano because it was very popular. Uh, this particular piece uh, is called The Cold and Frosty Morning. And... Uh, uh, very mysterious past. Uh, it, it shows up in a lot of banjo music, uh, very uh, occasionally fiddle tunes. Uh, this is a variation that I found uh, while playing down in Branson one summer. I'm very happy with the arrangement of this, and I love this song, partially because in Nebraska, by golly, we do have some very cold and frosty mornings, which you um, <laughs> probably remember about two weeks ago. Uh, one interesting thing people always ask me about Nebraska. They ask me uh, uh, several things. One, they want to know about the football team. I know very little about the football team, but I know a lot about the weather growing up on a farm. And I tell you what, cold and frosty mornings are part of our Nebraska history here. I'm so happy to be in Lincoln now. I have no more animals to do chores with. I have one cat, and I don't have to chop the horse tank open for the cat. Uh, but this song always reminds me of some of those cold mornings. The cold and frosty morning.
I always like to play that song when I'm doing an outdoor show in the middle of the summer. When there's sweat dripping down my face, I try and trick myself into thinking that it's cool outside. The cold and frosty morning. An authentic old Irish tune. Quite often the music that was played across uh, the Midwest here uh, was performed a cappella. You were typically in a wagon or on horseback or on foot. You did not have room for instruments. Uh, very seldom did they carry instruments. In the wagons, you needed food and water. And so the instruments, if they were along, had to be very portable. Mandolin, violin uh, are mentioned. This very seldomly, although we know these, these were out here, unfortunately, a lot of times when they talk about music that they were performing, they don't say what they were playing. And quite often they don't say the instruments, uh, so we've got to kind of guess. But we know very, very commonly that the, uh, most of the music was done a cappella. Quite often we read about them doing hymns on the, on the trails. However, these old Celtic tunes would have been perfect for a campfire. And so here's a great one. This one actually suits me very well. I traced this one back to England. Uh, and uh, the, the people who gave me the, as much information as they possibly could so that they couldn't get any further than England, they didn't know the person that they knew who had brought it to them, didn't know where it came from, so it is a true folk song. Uh, but it is entitled, The Blacksmith's Son. And this is a perfect song for me because I am a blacksmith's son. And so typically what would happen is you would have a round of folks uh, around a campfire, uh, or a, a, in, a, in a, a meeting group of any kind, and they would sing the chorus together, and one person may sing the verses, and, but they would sing a chorus between each verse. Uh, we, I'm going to sing this song and not do the chorus in between each verse to save a little bit of time, because we've got a lot of music to get through tonight. But the song is called The Blacksmith's Son, and if you can catch on to the chorus, you're welcome to sing along. All right, here we go. Oh, my father is a blacksmith, and I'm a blacksmith's son. He's taught me everything I know until the time had come That I had learned me trade so well and then I could say true Oh, me father is a blacksmith and now I'm a blacksmith too Now when I was a little lad I watched me father work He bid me fetch and carry and from that I'd never shirk I'd stand beside his forge all day waiting to lend a hand Watching all the different jobs so I could understand And in my youth I learned more skills of working by his side Made plowshares and implements and learned to take a pride In helping him to shoe the horse, help him to mend the wheel I learned all the different jobs till I got the feel Oh, me father is a blacksmith and I'm a blacksmith's son He's taught me everything I know until the time had come That I had learned me trade so well and then I could say true Oh, me father is a blacksmith and now I'm a blacksmith too In course of time I was his match and we worked as man to man we gained the reputations as the best smiths in the land. But now me father's old and frail and he doesn't work so free. So he stands beside me, little lad, who stands there watching me. And now the circle's gone full turn. Another little lad stands beside the blacksmith's forge, awaiting on his dad. I bid him fetch and carry and look forward to the day when he has learned all that I know. Then he'll turn round and say, Oh, my father is a blacksmith and I'm a blacksmith's son. He's taught me everything I know until the time had come that I had learned me trade so well and then I could say true. Oh, my father is a blacksmith and now I'm a blacksmith too. Yeah, all right. So that would have been a round that you could have heard around a campfire. Typical Celtic style. Um, I'm going to do one now that uh, dates back quite a ways as well. It's called, um, well here in America it has, has grown legs. That is now called The Girl I Left Behind Me. And uh, originally the song was uh, known as The Waxies Dargle. And I believe I have the lyrics. Yes, I do have the here. The, the Waxies Dargle. Um, I don't have a date on this song, uh, but very interesting tune. I had heard this song many, many times. It is, it is played quite often in the Civil War camps. 
uh, as The Girl I Left Behind Me. And, uh, and when you hear the tune, you'll probably recognize it. I'm going to play it on this instrument. This is a gourd banjo. And as you can see, it is actually made out of an old gourd. Uh, these, uh, these were popular from around 1790 to about 1840. The Americans loved the sound of this instrument. Actually, it came from Africa as an instrument called the Atatung King. And the Atatung King looks very similar to this. The Americans uh, flattened out the fretboard and gave it a couple extra strings because we like to hear chordal melodies. The Africans were using their instrument more as a rhythm instrument. And so when the Americans heard that sound, they said, ha, ah, we can make that work. So this is a piece of goat skin stretched over the top of an old gourd. A uh, very simple instrument, uh, very durable. It can be used as a canoe paddle. <laughs> I've not tried it with this one. This is number 32 of uh, a, a number 100 of this, this fellow made. Uh, this guy was from down in Georgia. He patterned this after a, a lithograph print uh, from the late 1700s uh, that he had seen. And so we're going to give it a try with the Waxies Dargle. Uh, we're going to sing some of the modern lyrics, and I'm going to try and fit in uh, some of the old lyrics. Uh, the waxy uh, was a, a shoemaker, a leather stitcher, and typically had waxy fingers, a person that was a, a worker and a laborer, and was not considered a wealthy person. And so the dargle was a, an event that uh, people went to on the shores, and they, uh, they would uh, have a big party. And so the waxies decided one year that, by golly, they were going to have a dargle as well. Uh, and that's where this song came from. When it made its way to America here the, uh, Civil War, during the Civil War, and the, the, the uh, settlers uh, changed the lyrics uh, in true folk music fashion. Uh, so we're going to start off with the American version so that you might under, uh, uh, realize the tune. Is you, once you hear it, you'll know it, I'm sure. Struck the trail in 79 And the herd strung out behind me And I thought of me gal, me sweet little gal The gal I left behind me Now the wind did blow and the hail did fall And the sun did come and blind me And I thought of me gal, me sweet little gal The gal I left behind me Oh, the sweet little gal, that pretty little gal, the gal I left behind me. The sweet little gal, the pretty little gal, the gal I left behind me. Get off this trail, this troubles they won't find me. I'll make me way sweet back again to the gal I left behind me. Oh, the sweet little gal, that pretty little gal, the gal I left behind me. The sweet little gal, the pretty little gal, the gal I left behind me. going to give a try at some of the original lyrics to the Waxies Dargle. Says my old one to your old one, will you go to the Waxies Dargle? Says your old one to my old one, well I haven't got a farthing. I went up to Monto Town to see me Uncle Marty, but he wouldn't give me half a crown to go to the Waxies Dargle. We have a pint, I'll have a pint, will you have a pint with me, sir? I'll have one dozen orders, soon we'll be checked out of this boozer. Oh, 
there we go. Ladies and gentlemen, quarantine tonight on this uh, St. Patrick's Day Eve. We're so glad that you're here. Paul Siebert is our special guest tonight and uh, entertaining us. Now, tell us again. I know I've asked you this question. Explain this to our viewers. Uh, th this instrument is the Santur. It's spelled S-A-N-T-U-R. Okay. Uh, it is the forerunner to the modern piano. Uh, and it was a p very portable, popular instrument uh, because you couldn't get a piano out very far uh, here in Nebraska in the sure. early days. Uh, and a lot of our early classical uh, Bach, Beethoven music was written on an instrument like this. It eventually became the harpsichord and then the piano. And still very popular in Europe, but you very seldom see them here in America. And because they are uh, worldwide, every culture has a different name for them. And here in America, quite often they are uh, called a hammered dulcimer. Now the word dulcimer uh, actually means sweet string sound, translated from Latin. And so it's because it's played with mallets, hammered dulcimer. But it is its actual title is santur, S-A-N-T-U-R. I don't know what it is, but while you're playing it, it is so relaxing to watch. Have you heard that from other people? I mean, you just lightly tap it with those... Uh, what do you call those? The uh, mallets. The mallets. Yep. And uh, it's so relaxing to watch you play it. And I was just watching through the viewfinder here on television. I thought, what a nice thing to have on television. Such a relaxing uh, evening here with all of the music that you've got. Now, it is the night before uh, St. Patrick's Day. I have to ask you, hey, do you have the song Get Out Your Black and Tans? Is that one of yours? No, I don't do that one. I, I'm familiar with the tune, but I don't have it learned. So <laughs> I, I actually I went to... I went to college with a bunch of Irish folks, and I mean everywhere Irish. A lot of them from the south side of Chicago. And we used to go uh, during St. Patrick's Days to South Chicago and uh, get out your black and tans, obviously, the south side Irish like our fathers were before. A uh, lot of tradition in the Midwest with the Irish. Uh, what about the Notre Dame fight song? Do you have that on your list? <laughs> No, unfortunately, I don't. That's a different kind of fight in Irish, yes. <laughs> no, I can play the Husker fight song. I bet good. you can do the Husker fight song. Well, this is great. What do we have coming up here in the next set? Uh, in the next set, we have a another uh, uh, acapella tune called Lever Johnny Lever. Oh, nice. Uh, a couple more uh, Hammer Dulcimer tunes, a, a song on the button accordion. So. Oh, well, you can't go wrong with an accordion on this show, let me tell you that. Uh, so. Once they've heard Leo Lani Orchestra, it's all over with accordions. Yep. I love the Leo Lani Orchestra. Well, I tell you what, let's go ahead and tech our, check our uh, mailbag, Mike's mailbag. We get notes from all over the state, have had so many nice notes on Paul Siebert uh, after he appears, and would invite you to send us one if you're enjoying what you're seeing here tonight. Let's take a look at the mailbag. What do we have? Uh, let's see here. Our first letter today from Vertigree. This is Lola and Marvin. We want to thank you for your programs. We like polkas and waltzes. Imagine that. They're in Vertigree, and they like polkas and waltzes. The best, because we used to dance a lot at Kings and Riverside with some of the bands you see, you use now. So thank you, Lola and Marvin. We are glad you're watching up there in northern Knox County. Here's one from Kay in Hastings. I really enjoy the variety of the talent that performs in quarantine tonight. It's nice to see local and Nebraska talent. I must say that polkas are my favorite, like Leo Lani, Angie Creech, uh, Mark Villadal, uh, keep up the good work, and I hope this entertainment can continue well into the future. Well, thank you, Kay. We are glad you're watching in Adams County and appreciate the nice note. And here's one up to Platte County. Pat Perry, it says, I just want you to know how much we appreciate all you have done and you are still doing to help us deal with all this craziness. Thank you for all the evening entertainment, something for everyone. But, of course, my family all loves the polkas. You do such a good job arranging all these people. I have to, by the way, credit Johnny Ray Gomez for that. It's nice to watch and to listen to something that makes us smile. Well, thank you, Pat, from Columbus. We appreciate that. Uh, just a couple of quick notes. As you may know, that uh, during the spring, I actually serve in the legislature, and uh, we're getting to the point now where we're starting to have full-day floor debate. So tomorrow uh, will be another show that I'm going to do. We've got a huge band with lots of horns in it. But starting next week, Johnny Ray Gomez is going to fill in for me because the days get a little long in the legislature with all the bills. And uh, Johnny Ray does a good job of scheduling everything. He's been in the business a long time. He's going to be my fill-in host as we uh, continue the program here. And uh, I'm going to pop in from time to time, but I'm looking forward to taking this uh, road show back to my hometown of Norfolk starting here in June, where Paul knows how to get there. He's been there twice and has done a wonderful job. I'll tell you what, we're going to have more with Paul. We're going to check that forecast coming up. 
Uh, another storm this week? Well, if you're in southeast Nebraska, yes. Uh, but first, let's start with our news and Alex Loroff right here on NCN. All right, uh, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Quarantine Tonight. We've got Paul Siebert here, a special Irish show tonight. You can see he's wearing his green. I somehow forgot to wear my green. I was saving my green tie for tomorrow. Uh, didn't really appreciate how green we'd be tonight right here. Now, Paul is a longtime performer, uh, raised, uh, born and raised in Sutton, Nebraska, there on the... Uh, the Nebraska-Kansas border down there, more yeah, or Actually, less. a little community called Farmer's Valley. Oh. Uh, it was right on the West Fork of the Big Blue, but it's no longer there. It never got a railroad, so it had a church and a school and a cemetery and a post office at one time and a flour mill. Uh, and my parents, great-grandparents, uh, migrated from Russia and homesteaded right there. So Now, how far is that from the Kansas border? Uh, probably about a 45-minute drive. Now, when I was in high school, Sutton had a really good football team. Yes. Yeah. And uh, they were always competing very for the state title. Yes. yes. Uh, do you get back there very much? Yeah. My son uh, actually lives on the, the home place. Oh, really? Uh, yep, right on the West Fork of the Big Blue River there at Farmer's Valley. And so I, w I opted to let him buy it since he had many years left to grind away at it. So, so he's farming? No, actually, we uh, narrowed it down to five acres, and he is the uh, maintenance uh, tractor maintenance manager at York Equipment. Oh, wow. So... And how far is York from Sutton? Uh, about 12 miles. Okay. So, okay, this is helping me put everything in yeah. perspective here. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, Paul is here with a special Irish show. If you are looking for somebody uh, to provide entertainment for your uh, event, Paul is available. Not only does he do Irish music, he does special Christmas music, but you've just got a whole, I think the first time you were on, it was just a variety of music from different genres, different eras, and a lot of history that goes with all the music. Yeah, the, uh, most of all of my programs, uh, we talk about where the songs came from. I do specific uh, shows about each of the instruments that I do. Uh, of course, being through the Arts Council of Humanities, my programs are all fashionable to what, whatever the situation is. Uh, this next coming up weekend, I'm going to be doing a 1840s living history reenactment. Uh, so the, the music is all going to be period 1840 and prior. Uh, I do 1800 music and prior. Uh, and so I do rock and roll. I do a little he of really everything. He really does. Yeah. He did everything from the 1850s to uh, Neil Diamond the yep. last time we saw him, or uh, time before. So it really is for all occasions. We're going to provide you some information on how to get a hold of Paul here in just a little bit. But next, of course, let's do it. Paul Siebert right here on News Channel Nebraska. Great. Thanks, Mike. Well, for those of you just tuning in, we, uh, my name is Paul Siebert. We are going to be doing some uh, classic Irish music actual uh, old-timey Irish music and some American Irish music. And we're going to hear some songs that uh, have been uh, run through the folk gamut here in America, that, uh, of songs that are uh, Celtic and Irish in nature uh, and in, in spirit, but have had their lyrics changed, which is very classically common in, in America with folk songs. And any folk song here, even in America, can change from the East Coast to the West Coast. And the tunes can change slightly, and sometimes the words completely. In this case, this next song is one where the words have completely changed. Um, the song originally was entitled, Johnny, I Hardly Know Ye or hardly knew ye. And if you know anything about Irish history, you know that the Irish have been at war for pretty much all the years uh, that they've been a country. Uh, they've been uh, invaded by France and everybody that's around their sides and enslaved. If every, any country knew the word of being enslaved, it was Ireland. And this particular song was a, a dreadfully creepy song uh, called Johnny I Hardly Knew Ye. And it was about young men going off to war, never coming home, and very, very sad. Uh, when the young Irishmen came here to America, they, uh, of course, a lot of them found themselves in the midst of the Civil War, and they decided they were not going to let that happen here in America like it happened in Ireland. And so this song became something new to them, and during the Civil War, it became known as When Johnny Comes Marching Home Again, and I'm sure you all know this one and have probably sang this back in grade school, so we're going to do the American version of this. Johnny, when Johnny comes marching home again. Well, 
When Johnny comes marching home again, hurrah, hurrah. We'll give him a hearty welcome then, hurrah, hurrah. The men will cheer and the boys will shout and the ladies, they will all turn out and we'll all be gay again when Johnny comes marching home. The old church bells will peal with joy, hurrah, hurrah. To welcome home our darling boys, hurrah, hurrah. The village lads and lassies say with roses they will strew the way and we'll all feel gay again when Johnny comes marching home. When Johnny comes marching home again, hurrah, hurrah. We'll give him a hearty welcome then, hurrah, hurrah. The men will cheer and the boys will shout and the ladies they will all turn out and we'll all feel gay when Johnny comes marching home. Get ready for the jubilee, hurrah, hurrah. We'll give those heroes three times three, hurrah, hurrah. The laurel wreath is ready now to place upon his royal brow and we'll all feel gay when Johnny comes marching home. When Johnny comes marching home again, hurrah, hurrah. We'll give him a hearty welcome then, hurrah, hurrah. The men will cheer, the boys will shout, and the ladies, they will all turn on and we'll all feel gay when Johnny comes marching home. Let love and friendship on that day, hurrah, hurrah. Their choices, pleasures, then display, hurrah, hurrah. And let each one perform some part to fill the joy of the warrior's heart. We'll all feel gay again when Johnny comes marching home. When Johnny comes marching home again, hurrah, hurrah. We'll give him a hearty welcome then, hurrah, hurrah. The men will cheer, the boys will shout, and the ladies, they will all turn out, and we'll all feel gay when Johnny comes marching home. Yeah, if you probably remember singing that one back in grade school. I know we made up all kinds of lyrics to that one on the school bus. All right, uh, again, would have been probably one that would have been sung a cappella uh, along the trail. We're going to do another a cappella tune here. This one is uh, known as the Sea Shanty. It's called Lever Johnny Lever. And if you had the opportunity to watch one of Ireland, or excuse me, Nebraska's best Irish bands, Paddywhack, one of my favorite uh, bands in the area, they performed this song. In fact, I learned it from these guys. Uh, it's called Lever Johnny Leader, and it works better with a three or four part harmony. Uh, however, uh, sitting around a campfire uh, in the evenings, this is a great old sea shanty. And these would have been songs that if you were on a sailing ship, and if you can imagine a sailing ship, not a steam-powered ship. Uh, my family made it over on a steam-powered ship in the 1870s, but the early ships were sailing power. Again, very, very small quarters, almost no instruments were brought along. All the songs were done a cappella. This is a classic. Uh, this is one that the young fellows would have sang and uh, very reminiscent of a sea shanty. Lever, Johnny Lever. Again, uh, would have been sang as a round, so if you catch on to the, uh, the, uh, uh, the main chorus, you're welcome to sing along at home. Here we go. <clears throat> oh, I thought I heard the old man say, Lever, Johnny Lever. You can go ashore and spend your pay, but it's time for us to leave her course. Leave her, Johnny, leave her. Oh, leave her, Johnny, leave her. You can go ashore and spend your pay, but it's time for us to leave her. Well, I wish I was a thousand miles from here. Leave her, Johnny, leave her. In a warm, dark pub, drinking good, dark beer, and it's time for us to leave her. Leave her, Johnny, leave her. Oh, leave her, Johnny, leave her. In a warm, dark pub, drinking good, dark beer, and it's time for us to leave her. So we went on shore just the other night. Leave her, Johnny, leave her. And we howled like cats in the pale moonlight, and it's time for us to leave her. Leave her, Johnny, leave her. Oh, leave her, Johnny, leave her. And we howled like cats in the pale moonlight, and it's time for us to leave her. 
Well, we walked on into an English bar, Lever, Johnny Lever, and a crusty old Frenchman broke me jaw, and it's time for us to leave her. Leave her, Johnny, leave her. Oh, leave her, Johnny, leave her. And a crusty old Frenchman broke me jaw, and it's time for us to leave her. Well, we walked on into an Irish pub. Leave her, Johnny, leave her. And an Irish lass give me nose a rub, and it's time for us to leave her. Leave her, Johnny, leave her. Oh, leave her, Johnny, leave her. And an Irish lass give me nose a rub, and it's time for us to leave her. We went back on board with this Irish lass, leave her, Johnny, leave her. And she drank all her whiskey, and she stole all our cash, so it's time for us to leave her. Leave her, Johnny, leave her. Oh, leave her, Johnny, leave her. She drank all her whiskey, and she stole all her cash, and it's time for us to leave her. Leave her, Johnny, leave her. Oh, leave her, Johnny, leave her. She drank all her whiskey and she stole all her cash. Now it's time for us to leave her. All right. Well, during the break, uh, I saw some of the comments that people like polka music. Well, uh, the, the button accordion is well known as a polka instrument, and here in Nebraska, uh, we're pretty certain that the very first folks to probably bring this instrument to Nebraska were the Czechs and the Poles and the Germans. Uh, of course, north of Lincoln, Nebraska is one of the largest uh, Czech uh, settlements. It was probably the very first large group of uh, uh, English immigrants to come as a large group in A.B. and Bruno area. More than likely, this instrument was part of their uh, team, uh, and so... Again, very important in Nebraska history because it was portable, fairly inexpensive. This is a, a probably around a 1930s model, would have been probably bought from a Sears catalog, uh, but just a wonderful piece of, a fun piece of equipment. Uh, you don't see them around too often anymore. They're, not, they're, they're a little difficult to play, uh, but this great old next song I'm going to do is, uh, I think I can do this one from, from uh, memory. This one's called When Irish Eyes Are Smiling. And this one was also done by Chaunacy Alcott. Uh, the very first song we did tonight, if you missed the program early on, was Me Wild Irish Rose. Well, this song, uh, When Irish Eyes Are Smiling, is probably even more popular than that one. And tomorrow, if you're listening to AM radio and you hear some Irish tunes, very likely you will hear this song. Uh, it is an American Irish tune. It probably will never grace the shores of Ireland, but uh, a wonderful tune at that. And done well on the button accordion. Uh, and it's more of in a polka style, so here we go. It's called When Irish Eyes Are Smiling. When Irish eyes are smiling, tis like morning in the spring. In the lilt of Irish laughter, you can hear the angels sing. When Irish hearts are happy, all the world's a brighter place. Yes, when Irish eyes are smiling, sure they'll steal your heart away. When Irish eyes are smiling, tis like morning in the spring. In the lilt of Irish laughter, you can hear the angels sing. When Irish hearts are happy, 
All the world's a brighter place Yes, when Irish eyes are smiling Show to steal your heart away And when Irish eyes are smiling, show the steel your heart away. Yay! Always a happy sound. All right. Well, I'll tell you what, let's do another one on the Sontour here. Uh, this one uh, is called. Uh, hey, let me look here. Yeah, let's do. Uh, Let's do a Scottish tune. I was uh, I did the uh, uh, the Irish Festival downtown Lincoln a number of years in a row, and uh, uh, in front of the pubs down there in the uh, old market, uh, Haymarket, I guess it's called. And uh, one evening they decided they would invite in the the bagpipers, and uh, so they did. The bagpipers came in and did a classic Scottish tune, Celtic piece called Scotland the Brave. I'm going to do a version of it on the Sontour hammered dulcimer. A little bit quicker than they do it. It is a march tune. Uh, it has many, many hundreds of different kinds of lyrics. Uh, I'll do the lyrics that I know best. Uh, but this is a wonderful Celtic piece, Scotland the Brave. Where the drums in my heart are drumming, I hear the bagpipe coming. My body lass is coming over the sea. She's left her native island to come and live in my land. We love the folks are smiling, saying how do you do? Call in the boat ashore, play in the pipes for her, dressed in a tilt and a camasanta too. Drums in my heart are drumming, I hear the bagpipe coming, my bonnie lass is coming over the sea. That is so relaxing to see that all go down there. Ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> Paul Siebert on your television tonight. We've got a great show. Uh, what's up next? What are we going to do next? Um, uh, let me see here. We've got a couple. Of, we've got an old cowboy song named Annie Laurie. Uh, we've got um, another dulcimer song and another accordion song. So we got and we're going to do one on the, uh, uh, the, the ukulele as well. So. You've just got an instrument for everything, by the way. Yes. So we hope you're enjoying this and uh, want to thank Heritage at Fountain Point. They're at like 3,500 
uh, West Norfolk Avenue. They do a great job. A brand new facility with uh, just beautiful views as you look to the south and to the west uh, of the Elkhorn Valley down there deep in the valley. We invite you to check it out. You can see it on your television there. <gasps> Ooh, is that a hiccup, by the way? They, they were feeding me Starburst here. Uh, we all got a couple of, of uh, treats here as we got here tonight, and uh, you sent me into a, a hiccup there. That hasn't happened to me on TV for a long time. Well, I'm not on TV much, so if I hiccup, it's my own fault. I well, guess, so. I tell you what. Uh, that's right. Well, you need to get some Starburst. We'll get you yeah. some of those. Hey, ladies and gentlemen, stay with us here. We've got another hour of music with Paul Siebert coming up right here on NCN. Tomorrow night, right here on this program, we have Travis Rhythm and Blues. They're going to be here. As I understand it, they have a lot of horns, and uh, you're going to hear music, uh, the sounds of which is like Chicago. Uh, so we're excited for that. Uh, next week, the Hegg Brothers, the Bottle Tops. We've got a polka band coming a week from tomorrow night. So we've got a lot of uh, variety on the way. Tonight, it's Paul Siebert as we get ready to celebrate St. Patrick's Day and uh this next song here brings out the guitar, one of your more traditional instruments, I would say. Uh, actually, the guitar is actually later in the career of, of American folk music. Around 1900, we started getting reference of the guitar. Uh, prior to that, it wasn't a very popular instrument. So this in uh, song in no particular probably would have been performed on an English guitar. Okay. Uh, so this is going to be close. So... Let's do it. Ladies and gentlemen, Paul Siebert right here on Quarantine Tonight. Great. If you're just joining us for the second hour of Quarantine Tonight, uh, my name is Paul Siebert. Uh, we're doing uh, Celtic music tonight, uh, both old-time style Celtic music, uh, authentic uh, Irish music, and American Irish music. This next one uh, dates back to the 1820s. Uh, and very possibly could have been a song that you could have heard on the cowboy trail, although uh, the American movie system has kind of given us a bad view of what cowboys were like. Um, the, the cowboy did not actually stand around a campfire and play a guitar and look like Roy Rogers, unfortunately. Um, after Post-1900, though, yes, after the ranches were all in place here and the um, homesteading had all taken place, you may have started to see guitars, especially after the Civil War. Uh, but up until that point, not very popular. Uh, but this song works very well with the guitar, and I can imagine a young cowboy uh, singing this song. Now, it is, the, the song is believed to be Scottish. It's called Annie Laurie, a uh, beautiful cowboy, known as a cowboy song. However, uh, cowboys did a lot of singing. We do know that. Uh, most of the time, they don't tell us what they were singing. Uh, we do know they sang a lot of hymns. Uh, but this song in particular uh, reminds me of possibly of a of a, uh, a poor uh, Irish feller who's sitting out in the sand hills in western Nebraska out here, missing his girl back home in Scotland or Ireland. Uh, and uh, we, we kind of know that this song is very Scottish in nature because the opening line says, Max Welton's braes are bonny. Well, the, the, the word Max Welton is actually a town in Scotland that is no longer. But he says, the braes are bonny, meaning the braes, the hillsides around the town of Max Welton are beautiful. They were used the word bonny uh, for many things that, that they appreciate. A lot of times it's referring to people. In this case, it's referring to the landscape. And a young cowboy sitting on a hillside probably would have been apt to sing a lot. And part of the reason that they sang was, one, out of loneliness, but two, out of necessity. There were a lot of trouble with wolves and coyotes in Nebraska and Wyoming. And as long as the wolves and coyotes heard the cowboys' voices, and the cattle as well, it would stop a stampede, which was a killer. And so singing was a very common thing, whistling, hollering, uh, but singing would have been common as well. So this is a heartbreaker, though, from a broken-hearted cowboy. And I can just imagine hearing the cowboys singing this and the moon shining in the western sky. Uh, and if you can smell the, the cowboy coffee with this one. Annie Laurie. Max Welton's braids are bonny Where early falls the dew And t'was there that Annie Laurie She 
gave me her promise true gave me her promise true and never forget shall I but for Bonnie and Lori I would lay me down and die Now her brow twas like the snowdrift And her throat it was like the swan And her face it is the fairest That ever the sun shone on That ever the sun shone on and dark blue is her eye And for Bonnie and Lori I would lay me down and die Oh, oh for Bonnie and Lori I would lay me down and die Oh, the Lonesome Cowboy. Yeah, here's another song that you might have heard a young cattle puncher sing. Um, again, if you missed the first part of the show, this is a gourd banjo prior to 1840. It's possible you would have seen something like this out here on the plains. Uh, a handmade instrument made out of a gourd. It is the forerunner to the modern banjo. By 1840, uh, you saw... Uh, an open-backed banjo, which was made with a drum head, and by the time of the Civil War came along, the banjo was extremely popular, and you had people writing music specifically for the banjo. Uh, now, this particular song uh, goes back a long, long way. Uh, I first learned this playing in a bluegrass band. We called the song uh, "The Red-Haired Boy," and there's very there's a number of variations to this song. Um, this particular version, The Little Beggar Man, is one of the earliest versions I can find and probably is one of the, uh, the original versions of this tune. However, when it made its way here to America, again, uh, lyrics, lyrics changed and uh, uh, people made up different so uh, lyrics to it and the tune changed slightly. And so when you hear it played with the bluegrass band, it may sound just a little different, but you might catch on to the tune. But again, I can imagine... Uh, sitting around a ca cowboy campfire, listening to this old Celtic Irish tune, The Little Beggar Man. <laughs> Little beggar man, a begging I have been for three score more on the little Isle of Green. I'm known from little fee and down to school, and I go by the name of old Johnny Do. Well, all the trades are going well, the begging is the best. When a man gets tired, he can sit down and rest. I begs for me supper, and there's nothing more to do but cut around the corner on me old rig of do. I slept in the barn down at Colorbron And a wet night came and I slept until the dawn With a hole in the roof and the rain a-coming through And the cats and the rats were playing peek a -boo. When who did I wake but the woman of the house With her white spotty apron and her calico blouse She began to frighten and I said boo I said don't be afraid ma'am it's old Johnny Doo And all the trades are going the begging is the best When a man gets tired he can sit down and rest I begs for me supper and there's nothing more to do Cut around the corner on the old rig do Oh, 
All the trades are going where the begging is the best. When a man gets tired, he can sit down and rest. Begs for supper, and there's nothing more to do but cut around the corner on me old rig a doo. You can smell the cowboy campfire with that one. You know how they make cowboy coffee, don't you? They take an old boiler, fill her with water, and they get her rolling hot over the campfire while they fill an old tube sock full of coffee grounds, clear to the top, and they tie her shut and throw her in. And then when the sock is fully dissolved, you got cowboy coffee for the rest of the night. Yes, sir. Let's do a modern banjo song here. This one is a Scottish tune. Um, here again, this is a tenor banjo. It would have been something you probably would have seen uh, prior, post-1930s. And uh, this, this song actually, too, is uh, from the early 1900s. It is a Scottish tune. It's called Me Bonnie Lies Over the Ocean. And uh, I always thought as a child, who is Bonnie? I thought it was some woman. Uh, but uh, evidently, the song is about a young Scottish prince who was abducted during a war skirmish. And uh, during the skirmish, why they believed that he had been taken across the ocean and possibly murdered. And so they wrote this lament of a song that we all sing. And uh, unbeknownst to most school children, it is a lament of a dead or dying uh, Scottish prince instead of a beautiful woman. Although I have found several cowboy versions of this that I'm going to insert a, a lyric or two from. But uh, you'll recognize this one and you can sing along with it as well. My bunny lies over the ocean My bunny lies over the sea My bunny lies over the ocean Oh, bring back my bunny to me Sing along! We'll bring back, bring back Oh, bring back my bunny to me, to me Bring back, oh, bring back Bring back my bunny to me. Here's an old version, uh, verse that I read in a cowboy <laughs> periodical, thinking that possibly the young cowboy did not realize that the song was about a young Scottish prince. He inserted his own words, and they go like this. Last night I laid out on me pillow, and I dreamed of me bonny's brown hair. Last night I laid out on me pillow And I dreamt that me bonnie was there So bring back, bring back Oh, bring back my bonnie to me, to me Bring back, bring back Oh, bring back my bonnie to me So blow ye winds over the ocean Blow ye wind over the sea Yes, blow ye wind over the ocean And bring back my bunny to me Everybody will bring back, bring back Oh, bring back my bunny to me, to me Bring back, oh, bring back Oh, bring back my bunny to me We're going to do a uh, modern American Irish tune on the ukulele. By the way, if you have grandkids at home, uh, nephews and nieces, these are a wonderful little instrument uh, that you can teach children to play on. My, my children all learned the violin when they were three. Uh, these are nice and small. Children can get their hands around them. They make great, excellent gifts. Um, and so if you're considering buying a child a gift, uh, these are a lot of fun. And, and everybody should have one of these. And once you learn to uh, play one, they're just a lot of fun. So uh, this particular song is, uh, I don't even know if I have the lyrics here with me today. I, I'm hoping I can remember this, this uh, tune. Um, ah, Pago Me Heart. Uh, Fred Fisher, 1913. So this has been a song, too, you could have gotten on a Victrola 78. Who remembers the Victrola machines? Yes. Uh, Pago me heart. Uh, I remember. I remember hearing this song. 
Andy Williams, I think, did a version of this song. Again, classic American Irish tune. Uh, probably never reached the shores of Ireland, but anyway, we love it here in America. Pego me heart. Oh, Pego my heart. I love you. We'll never part. Cause I love you and I always knew. That it could be you And since I met your little laughter It's your Irish heart of laughter Peg on my heart Your glances made my heart say How's my chances come be my own Come make your home in my heart I can only imagine uh, the uh, <clears throat> the version on the uh, Victrola 78. If you had a Victrola, you know what, what they sounded like. Our, we had one at home. Ours was a little tabletop model. And of course, you had to wind them up like an old tractor. Uh, but if you kept the needles and records clean, they didn't sound too bad. You young camera guys, you've probably never seen one of those. Uh, I have kids ask me all the time, it's like, uh, what a record player. Yeah, I'm an AM radio. Here's what a Victrola may have sounded like with this song. Here we go. Something like that. <laughs> All right, here we go. Ah, here's another great American Irish tune I wanted to fit in that didn't get in earlier. This one is called Tooralooralooral. It was made famous by Bing Crosby in a 1941 film called Going My Way. Again, another American Irish tune. If you recall the movie, Bing, uh, it's a black and white film. Bling, Bing, <laughs> Bing plays the part of a uh, Catholic Irish priest, and he and his friend one evening are sitting around, and his, his uh, Irish priest friend is missing, missing his mother back in Ireland. And he sings him... This great old tune, and uh, again, 1941. The song dates back a little older than that, but it was made popular by Bing Crosby in 1941. It's called Tooralooralooral. Well, over in Killarney, many years ago, me mother sang the song to me. In tones so sweet and low Ah, oh, just a little ditty In her good old Irish way And I'd give the world If she could sing that song for me this day Sing along if you know it Oh, to ra ra to Ralura Light To Ralura Lura Ah, oh, hush now, don't you cry Oh, To Ralura Lura To Ralura Light Oh, To Ralura Lura That's an Irish lullaby 
Now often in dreams I wander back to that cot again And I feel her arms a-hugging me as when she did back then and I hear her voice a humming to me as in days of yore when she used to rock me fast asleep outside the old cabin door. Here we go. All oh, to Ralu, 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 to Ralu, Ralu. That's an Irish lullaby. Yeah. Here's a piece that is. Uh, these are a, a lot of these are are slower tunes. Uh, you know, I uh, I was able to play uh, uh, one of the uh, pubs. Burke's Pub in Omaha one time, and it surprised me. At 2 o'clock in the afternoon, I got there, and there wasn't anywhere to park. I should have known. <laughs> uh, but it's, it, was quite, it was quite an experience. I got in there, and they gave me enough about a postage stamp size to stand on. And, of course, they were serving corned beef and cabbage, which if I were you tomorrow, go seek out your favorite pub and find some corned beef and cabbage, which is a favorite on St. Patrick's Day. Uh, and... Uh, have some corned beef and cabbage and some, and some beer, some Guinness. But here's a song that they thoroughly enjoyed. This is a party tune. Uh, and during the song, they had this little ritual that as the, the chorus came around, they would pound their beer glasses on the table. So if you know how that goes in your home and you're having a stein of beer right now, a Guinness, a pint of Guinness, well, you can do the, the beer stein hammer. Well, I've been a wild rover for many a year And I spent all me money on whiskey and beer And now I'm returning with gold in great store And I'll never play the wild rover no more And it's no, nay, never No, nay, never, no more Shall I play the Wild Rover? No, never, no more. I went to an alehouse I used to frequent. And I told the landlady me money was spent. I asked her for credit and she answered me nay. For a custom as yours I can get any day And it's no, nay, never No, nay, never, no more Shall I play the Wild Rover? No, never, no more Well, I took from me pocket ten sovereigns bright and the landlady's eyes opened up with delight She said, I have a whiskey and the wine's of the best And the words that I spoke to you were only in jest Now it's no, nay, never No, nay, never, no more Shall I play the Wild Rover? No, never, no more I'll go home to me parents Confess what I've done And I'll ask them to pardon Their prodigal son And if they forgive me As often before Sure, I'll never play the Wild Rover no more And it's no, nay, never No, nay, never, no more Shall I play the 
the wild rover No, never, no more For I've been a wild rover for many a year And I spent all me money on whiskey and beer And now I'm returning with gold in great store And I'll never play the Wild Rover no more And it's no, nay, never No, nay, never, no more Shall I play the Wild Rover? No, never, no more And it's no, nay, never No, nay, never, no more Shall I play the Wild Rover? No, never, no more. <laughs> the Wild Rover. This is an old English tune. It's considered a Celtic tune occasionally. Its original title is called Green Sleeves. Alas, my love, you've done me wrong To cast me off discourteously For I have loved you so long Delighting in your company Green sleeves was all my joy Green sleeves was my delight Green sleeves was my heart of gold My love, my lady Green sleeves Thank you. I've got a tune here. This one is called uh, Over the Waterfall. Beautiful old Irish Celtic piece. Uh, uh, originally dating back in sometime into the 1600s. Uh, its original title was called The Eggs and the Marabones. Uh, what a peculiar title. It was a story song about an elderly couple that lived next to a fast-running, babbling stream, and, uh, 
And it ended abruptly in a waterfall close to their property. And over the years, the, the elderly woman had grown very weary and tired of the grumpy old man. And she was configuring out a way that she could poison him, push him into the stream, send him over the waterfall, and she'd be rid of him for the rest of her life. Uh, and it's a long story. I'm not going to sing the part to it. Uh, uh, but in the end, he pushes her in, and she goes over the waterfall. So we call the song Over the Waterfall now instead of the eggs in the marrow bones. And you probably can hear any good uh, 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 bluegrass band here in America play this particular piece, Over the Waterfall. And we've got her sent over the waterfall. Well, I tell you what, quarantine tonight. It's blessed to have Paul Sieber tonight uh, with all the different instruments. Now, what instrument haven't you used tonight? Is there uh, one that you haven't touched? No, I think I've played them all that I have. To, you know what? I do have another one that I'll, I'll bring out yet before the evening's over. So, What is that? That's Give a, us a little clue. The Jew's harp. Oh, there we go. Yeah. Hey, ladies and gentlemen, we have just about 20 minutes left here on this program, and we have a lot more to go. A reminder that tomorrow night, Travis Rhythm and Blues is going to be here. Uh, we're going to have uh, a lot of horns uh, on, uh, on the program. We haven't had that for a long time. And invite you to stick around. It is the night before St. Patrick's Day, and we've got lots to celebrate. A lot of green going on. My green tie will return tomorrow. I should have worn it tonight to fit in. I uh, also want to encourage you to send us a letter. We're going to put that address at the bottom of your screen. The letters mean a lot. And uh, if you could send us one, just tell us the programs that you've really enjoyed. Uh, share more with us about what you want to see on this program. We're doing our best to get shows from all over the state. Last night we had a barber, shet, uh, barber shop quartet from uh, Kearney, Nebraska. They did a wonderful job. 
We're looking for more bands and more musicians from the central and western part of the state, and uh, we're trying to convince them to drive to this undisclosed location. So uh, with your help, we'll get there, but let us know who you want to see. We'll put that address up coming up right after the break. This is News Channel Nebraska. Mr. Paul Siebert is on with us tonight. He is a, uh, an artist that lives in the Lincoln area uh, who has roots in south-central Nebraska. We'll say that. Uh, well, would you say south-central Nebraska? Yeah. Kind of, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Sutton. All over Sutton. Yep, around that Aurora area, yeah. If you're liking what you're seeing, uh, send us a letter. There's the address right there. It means a lot. In fact... Uh, and this program, it is a lot because I read each and every one of them, and I love it. I love hearing from people across the state. Not only do we put them on Mike's mailbag, but if you tell us not to put it on TV, we will certainly do that as well. Uh, we just like hearing from you, and we've gotten so much good mail about Paul here, who's done a great job. And tonight, it's uh, the Irish music as we get ready for tomorrow. How are you going to celebrate St. Patrick's Day tomorrow? Well, I'm actually performing at a local pub. Uh, oh, of course. They're and they're serving corned beef and cabbage. And I actually get to uh, tomorrow. Uh, one of the things that I do in the five-state area, I have over 350 retirement communities that I play at. Oh, yeah. Well, believe me, I haven't been able to go in any of them. But tomorrow, I am in one in the local area. Oh, there so, we go. Well, they'll so enjoy we'll be doing that. we some Irish tunes tomorrow. We're going to enjoy that. Well, enjoy this. This is Paul and uh, Paul Siebert. We're back on News Channel Nebraska. All right. Well, if you just joined the show, uh, my name is Paul Siebert, and we've been doing some Celtic tunes, uh, both American Celtic and actually authentic Irish Celtic music. So I don't know how to label this next one, except that I know it was modernly performed when I was a young boy on AM radio. Who remembers AM radio? I had one of those little transistor radios with a 9-volt battery. Anyway, uh, this, this particular song was around when I was a kid, and... Uh, uh, if you know anything about the Irish culture, they have a lot of mysticism. Uh, they, have, they believe in these fantastic beings like dragons and leprechauns and uh, pots of gold at the end of the rainbow. Who thought there was a pot of gold at the end of the rainbow? I always thought there was one. Uh, until my sister warned me that it was guarded by a leprechaun. And then I was a little bit scared of the pot of gold. But anyways, uh, mystical beings is part of their culture. And the unicorn was also part of their culture. So this, uh, this particular song was popular here in America. Uh, I don't know its origins, but it is a fun song. Now, the, we all know that there is no unicorns, but the Irish had this story as to why there isn't a unicorn around anymore, and it had to do with Noah and his ark. So here we go. See if you remember this old great song. It's called the Unicorn Song. Well, a long time ago when the earth was still green, there were more kind of animals than you'd ever seen. Well, they'd run around free while the world was being born. But the loveliest of all was the unicorn. <whistles> there were some green alligators, some long-necked geese, some humpty back camels, some chimpanzees. Some cats, some rats, some elephants, but sure as your barn, the loveliest of all was the unicorn. <whistles> now the Lord, he saw some sinning, and it caused him some pain. He said, stand back, Brother Noah, I'm going to make it rain. He said, now, hey, Brother Noah, I'll tell you what you do. Could you build me a floating zoo? And could you put in two alligators, two long-necked geese, two humpty back camels, two chimpanzees, two cats, or rats, or elephants? But sure as you're born, don't you forget my unicorn. <whistles> well, old Noah was there. He answered the call. He finished up the ark just as the rain started to fall And he marched in those animals two by two And he sang out as they went through He said, hey Lord, I got you two alligators and two long-necked geese Two humpty-back camels, two chimpanzees Two cats, two rats, two elephants But sure as your barn, Lord, I can't find any of your unicorns
So all know he looked out through the driving rain. And unicorns were hiding, playing silly unicorn games. They was kicking and splashing while the rain was falling down. Oh, them silly unicorns. And the ark had started to move, and it drift with the tide. The unicorns looked up from the rocks and they cried. And the water came up and sort of floated them away. And that's why you'll never see another unicorn to this very day. But you'll see some green alligators and some long neck geese, some humpty back camels, some chimpanzees, some cats, some rats, some elephants. But sure as your barn, you're never gonna see another unicorn. Ah, the kids will like that one. All right. Let's see. I promised uh, promised one more on the accordion. I've got a lot of music here. I'm going to have to look through and see if I brought the music for this next one. Uh, this one is... Uh, ah, this is also a, uh, a shanty. But it works well with the accordion. So I don't play Irish music every day, so I got to bring some of the music along with me. Hopefully I can read the lyrics from there. We can bring them over, I guess. This old song is called The Drunken Sailor, and uh, probably would have heard this uh, played on a concertina, which is a very similar instrument to this, except it is an octagon shape. It sounds exactly the same, played just a little differently, uh, and, uh, but the uh, song is called The Drunken Sailor. What do you do with a drunken sailor? What do you do with a drunken sailor? What do you do with a drunken sailor early in the morning? Way hey and up she rises, way hey and up she rises, way hey and up she rises early in the morning. Shave his belly with a rusty razor, shave his belly with a rusty razor, shave his belly with a rusty razor early in the morning. Stick him in a barrel with a hose pipe on him, stick him in a barrel with a hose pipe on him, stick him in a barrel with a hose pipe on him early in the morning. Hey, hey, and up she rises, hey, hey, and up she rises, hey, hey, and up she rises early in the morning. Yeah, <laughs> there's about 20 verses to that. We wanted to squeeze in a few more before the evening's over. Thank you so much for coming. Thank you so much for just turning your TV on tonight uh, and, uh, and spending the evening with us here at the NCN. Um, ah, here's a tune that uh, is quite commonly known as an Irish tune. However, uh, it is also known as an English tune. Uh, it's called Danny Boy. And uh, the tune itself dates back to the... 1600s. Um, music by Rory Dal O'Cahan. Um, in the 1600s, uh, and then of course in 1913, a fellow by the name of Frederick Weatherly took this piece and lovingly put the lyrics Danny Boy to this lyrics. And so now it is quite commonly known as both an Irish and an English tune. And uh, make sure we got this all working here. 
When I go out and do the uh, fairs, I always tell people that I have it. Do we have any monitor for this guitar? <laughs> there we go. <laughs> All right, so if you know this one, you can sing along with it. I've been asked to perform this song many times. Uh, very heart-wrenching uh, uh, song, but beautiful as well. Oh, Danny boy, the pipes, the pipes are calling. From glen to glen and down the mountainside. The summer's gone and all the flowers are dying. Tis you, tis you must go and I must buy. But come ye back when summer's in the meadow, or when the valley's hushed and white with snow, for I'll be there in sunshine and in shadow, oh Danny boy. Oh, Danny boy, I love you so. But when you come and all the flowers are dying, if I am dead and dead I well may be, you come and find the place where I am lying and kneel and say and not be there for me and I shall hear those soft you tread above me and all my dreams shall warmer sweeter be for you will bend and tell me that you love me and I shall sleep in peace until you come to me oh Danny boy Oh, Danny boy, I love you so. All right. This is a, uh, this next piece is done on the Sun Tour. It's a modern piece called A Shokin Farewell. Uh, written in the 1980s. I won't go into it. It's a, an, an interesting story. But if you've listened to any of the... Uh, Civil War series on PBS, you've probably heard this song because it is the theme song to the, uh, the Civil War series, which performs it. It was recorded back in the 1980s, but it's still being played. I actually have a copy of it on DVD. Uh, but the theme song is, is called Ashokan Farewell. It's a, written, it's a modern tune, uh, but just a beautiful piece. And uh, we'll, we'll get close to finishing up here tonight. Thanks again so much for coming out. But it's called the Ashokan Farewell.
Wow, so beautiful. I love that. And you have to be ranking high. My own mom just sent me a note and said, wonderful show. So I know you have at least two fans in Madison County, Nebraska. Uh, we're so glad that you're here tonight, Paul Siebert. Wonderful job, by the way. Thank you for sharing all your talents with us. And uh, I just have this feeling that this year is going to get a lot better for everybody, don't you? I sure hope so. <laughs> we can't do another 2020. And 2021 has to get a lot better because uh, we've been through it all. I uh, want to thank Paul. Tomorrow night, a reminder, we have Travis Rhythm and Blues. So a lot of horns tomorrow night, some music like Chicago. And uh, you have a wide variety of music, so we could have you back with some uh, new music coming up here. He knows both of our undisclosed locations. Can you believe that? Ladies and gentlemen, thanks so much for watching News Channel Nebraska. It's 10 o'clock. It's time now for news on NCN.